also need to record it because uh, we might need the file to upload to YouTube. So uh, recording it will be better than downloading from Facebook. Then they can load the notification with the Facebook page. Yeah. So it's already live. Sorry, we'll be uh, sharing it first before I start introducing the speaker. Sorry for waiting. We'll keep you waiting. Don't worry, take your time. Don't yeah. worry, take your time. <laughs> Thank you. I think this time maybe people are waiting to uh, ask you a question. Uh, but it is always uh, better to do it uh, in the evening time here in uh, Cambodia. But I think if we, it happened to be 5, 5 a.m. or 5 p.m. here, uh, you must be- It will be uh, 5, 5 a.m. <laughs> for me. <laughs> you do wake up, yeah. Okay, I think if everything is, is uh, set now. Uh, one more, okay. We started. Well, so we started now. Good morning, everyone. Uh, sorry for uh, keep you all waiting. Uh, I I think uh, you already. Uh, uh, have been waiting for our uh, speaker uh, today. Uh, I'm very glad to be joined by uh, Mr. Moon Bridge. Moon is currently pursuing his study at a universe, uh, United States Naval Academy. I think uh, many of you uh, have known him in person or maybe uh, you have heard about uh, uh, his, his uh, journey to uh, the US uh, in pursuing his, his, his military study. And uh, today discussion, uh, Moon, I think uh, we will be uh, essentially focus on uh, uh, military leadership. I think that your expertise that uh, you have more experience uh, in it and then you all understand uh, how military uh, leadership look like. Uh, but I, I really uh, hope to learn more about it. And our uh, audience out there also, uh, uh, want to learn more about uh, military leadership, but it is not limited to just military leadership. Uh, I, I believe that you will uh, be sharing your thought with us on a civil leadership issue as well. So it, it might not be different uh, to my understanding uh, in terms of, of, of how you uh, try to build your skill, uh, try you to uh, uh, strengthen your leadership uh, way and so on. So it might not be might different, I can say so, but I, I, I hope to learn more from you. Uh, again, uh, thank you uh, all uh, audiences for, for, for waiting and also for being interested in this uh, discussion. Uh, before I begin uh, the discussion, may I uh, have uh, Moon introducing yourself a little bit more because I, I know that you are pursuing a military study at uh, US uh, Naval Academy. It is one of the prestig uh, prestigious uh, the military uh, academy in the world as well as in, in, I think in the United States, of course, many people want to get in 
many people from around the world also wish to get in as well. So please uh, introduce yourself a little bit and tell us more about uh, what you're doing now and and which year you are in and 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 what uh, specific year you 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 will be graduating from the school. Thank you so much, Mr. Anisai. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Again, my name is Moon. Um, I'm currently studying at United States Naval Academy, as Mr. Anisai already, already mentioned. And to be honest, I'm not special, I'm not unique. I'm just one of you. And because I'm one of you, we share a lot of common issue, a lot of common problem. And specifically today, we talk about leadership. That's why I am here, not because I'm special again, but just would like to share with you what I believe, what I think, what I learned about leadership. And that's why I'm here. Thank you so much. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Moon, for, for your introduction, for for very uh, humble uh, introduction to yourself. Uh, we know that uh, everyone uh, has their own story to share. That's why uh, we are running our, our platform. But I, I believe in terms of leadership in military affair, Moon uh, might be, uh, I think, uh, uh, having a um, unique thing to share with us. So uh, without further ado, let me begin our discussion and, 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 and jump to our important uh, topic today. So Moon, once again, uh, you have been uh, in this uh, military uh, study for, for years. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it is already four years or something? Yes, it's almost four years right now. You are correct. It, okay, it's almost four years. So uh, I think that I uh, do remember we, because we we have uh, we used to be uh, in the program together uh, before you move into military. Because I think back then you just uh, uh, pursuing your study in in medical school, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think yeah, medical school and then Panya Sastran University. Okay. As well, yeah. In uh, international relations. Yes, you are correct. Okay. Thank That's you great. for remember that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we still remember because uh, it, it, it's quite a, a, a memorable moment uh, before you actually decided to move to military study. I think uh, many people really, uh, well, it's, it's, not, it's not many people. There's not many people uh, there to uh, make their own way when it comes to uh, changing their, the, the, the study field. They, they have been involved for years. So you have been doing it and then you make it uh, better than, than 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 many, so I think that that is, is also something that I want to stress at this time. Okay, uh, let's jump to the question. First of all, uh, how do you define leadership? I think it's not limited to military, but a common leadership definition you would have. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Nisai, for your question on leadership. I think the term leadership has been used for many many years, and when you heard the word leadership, you and I, and maybe the audience, would think about leaders and followers, right? In, in general. But you know what? In military, we are a little bit different. If we talk about leadership, we would think about officer and enlisted. Mm. But well, whether leader, whether follower, whether officer, or whether enlisted, we are all human. We are all people. And if you don't understand people, you don't understand leadership. I see. And, and very easy to say, hey, you're a leader. You must take care of your people. You must be a leader of character. You must have integrity, so on and so on. But frankly, it's very, very hard to do. I see. So, so is there any uh, a, a very small definition you would say or one specific word you, 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 you actually use to represent the word leadership? One adjective is fine. One noun is fine. Influence. Wow, influence. That's great. So uh, anyone who can influence the other, that we could say the one who has a, a leadership skill. Is that, am I correct? Or there might be uh, anything you want to add? Yes, sir, you are correct. Thank okay. you. <laughs> Thank you, Moon. Uh, I think that 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 can sign up to to let us understand uh, what leadership means uh, for you and in 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 a context that we can put in the military affair, as well as uh, in a general context of leadership that have been widely used right now. Okay, uh, if I'm going to uh, ask you to well, you already mentioned about uh, uh, the 
military uh, affair when you talk about leadership and the differences that could have between uh, a general or civil leadership and uh, military leadership. Can you give us uh, some differences between uh, the military leadership and civil leadership just to be uh, uh, maybe a, a, a short uh, description or a short, uh, a, 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 sorry, a, a brief of uh, differences you would say? Thank you. You know what you already mentioned, and, and I, I would agree on that too, that leadership in military or general leadership, almost the same. There's no much different. But what I noticed, the difference is that an officer, I mean leaders, I mean, a decision that a leader or an officer made in the military, it costs life and death. Hmm. However, in this general, I mean, civilian world, leader make a decision without maybe probably but not really in a life and that because in a combat or or um com, i mean the operation i mean combat operation when the decision is made and if it's wrong the whole troop may lose their life and you as leader will take account on that will take responsibility on that to face with the family friends that your decision your wrong decision lost other people's life I we see. are really, really be careful on that. Mm, that's great. But civil leadership is different. Um, I don't say it's different. I don't say it is. I don't think we are better. I don't think military leaders better. We are both important. There are many, many great um, leaders in civil civilian world. There are many good leaders in, in uh, military world. But there are also bad leaders leader as well in the military. I see. The, the way that I say is that we are not special, we are not um, better, but we are just different. The difference is that every decision that we made, it costs life and death. Mm -hmm. that, that, that one of the most important thing I, 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 I remember from, from what you say. And uh, it gives me a perspective, even in civil uh, leaderships, uh, maybe general management of a company or whatever organization we have, it's not the loss of life, but you lose someone or a group of people who follow you if you make a bad decision as a leader. It's just like- I agree, literary. yeah, you're right. <laughs> just like literally. So <laughs> you're on your own. You're master of the company, uh, you're master of your skill. You actually lead people, but you, you, if you lead badly, then I know that uh, <laughs> it's the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's the same. Yeah. But you just lose people, but yeah. they are alive. Yeah, yeah, they are, when you lose yeah, them, that means- yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, let me move to another question. Uh, I think uh, you, you already mentioned about uh, uh, the definition of the leadership and the differences we can uh, actually uh, learn from uh, civil and military leadership. But to you, uh, what, what, uh, what characteristic or quality a good leader possess or obtain in, in particular? You, you, you might have observed around you uh, and then you you could uh, eventually learn uh, what a what good leader uh, should be uh, having some quality or some characteristic when they're dealing with the issue. Can you share with us if a good leader should have uh, something uh, in particular? Thank you. Um, before I share on that, I'd like to highlight that the mission of the Naval Academy is to create a leader committed to the duty, honor, and country. So. Every day we will talk, we will, we will tell about how, be, how you should be a leader. But a lot of lessons I learned within my three, four years here at the academy and also at the fleet, I mean, in a real um, uh, military um, base and stuff. Um, every day we will talk about know your people, know your people. Because if you don't understand your people, if you don't know your people, you may lose sight. And again, my experience, I think it's about three years ago, I were um, assigned to a flea in California at um, um, a base in San Diego, San Diego. Yeah. Academy trained a leader, but they don't put me in a leader um, to work with a leader. However, they give me the opportunity to work with the enlisted. I leave, I sleep, I eat with enlisted men and women. And, and the thing is that, I realized that every decision that an officer made, it really affects those lives. So that I need to appreciate. I would, I would hold, I would teach 
taught to to appreciate their problem so that I make a better decision. And and that how you gonna take care of your your people. And again, communicate. Communication is really important. I don't think it's just military. It both sides, both well. If you see some things that is wrong, you need to communicate with your chain of command, with your people, telling them that this is wrong. We need to fix this. Yeah. Or if you think it is right, communicate with them. Hey, this is right. Continue to do it. We want, we want, we want that to happen. W whatever. So communication is the key in leadership, and especially in military because we have boss, and boss, and boss, and boss. So we need communication. Otherwise, <laughs> it's really, really misunderstanding. And you know what? If your troop go to the, to the um, combat or go to an operation without clearly understand the mission and the goal and stuff, they don't know what to do. And if they don't know what to do, they are in danger. Okay, I will keep another uh, move on. So lead by example. Every day, every day at the academy, I will tell, hey, you need to lead by example. And, and if you think your subordinate, your follower, or your enlisted were not looking at you, it might be a mistaken. I see. They look at us as a leader, the way we speak, the way we talk, the way we behave, the way we wear uniform, and even the way we're coming on time. So they're really, really watching us. If we don't live by example, who gonna who gonna listen to you? Yes, that's right. Taking accountability. So accountability is essential. If somebody doing the right thing and and will not get a reward, why do we have to do the good things? So we need to give reward. We need to take into account if people get wrong, we need to punish them. And military have a lot of way to punish. I'm not gonna talk about that. <laughs> and and um, again, if they do a good job, they got a lot of reward. That's why you see hero in, in military. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And we need to give time to, to our subordinate to maneuver. And based on my experience, I was assigned to be a company commander. Um, and then let me give you one um, uh, channel command in military so that you have an understanding. So we start with a fire team. We have um, SWAT, we have platoon commander, and then we have company commander. So as a job of the company commander, I need to take in care of my platoon commander so that my platoon commander will take care of the SWAT. And the SWAT leader will take care of the fire team leader taking care of the youngster and the plea. So I cannot lead every individual of people in my company, but the way that I can do is that I take care of my platoon commander. So I have four platoon commander who help me to, to, uh, to, um, uh, in my company. So I need to make sure that those four people are successful. I need to make sure that I give them the right latitude to maneuver, to navigate. And also it is important that I need to give them some room to take a risk so that they could have, I mean, practice or execute their own perspective, how the company should be. So I think it is good, um, I think this leader should consider. Yeah. And again, you need to own the problem. The first day that I show up at the academy, the only first word that they taught me is, sir, no excuse, sir. Ma'am, no excuse, ma'am. <laughs> so why, why we, we were taught that at the beginnings of the um, year induction day? Because we want, they want us to take responsibility and take ownership of the problem. For example, in my company, someone in the company make a mistake. And if they ask me that, why, why this mistake happened? I will say, sir, no excuse, sir. That means I take ownership of it. If I say, sir, not my mistake, I don't know, somebody mm -hmm. doing it, I'm going to be in trouble. Wow. They might look at me that I am not a leader of character because mm -hmm. I have no responsibility at all. Whether it's, not, whether it's my fault, whether somebody else's fault, it doesn't matter. I need to take accountability and ownership of the problem wow. and again failure it's just it's just the same to civilian world we all make yeah. problem right but we yeah. need to change and we need to um, learn from it yeah we need to move on it's okay to make mistake unless that mistake is not constantly a problem <laughs> right <laughs> and again leader is a servant it's not about you as a leader. It's not about you. It's about your people because you take care of your people so that your people can work for you to accomplish the goal. Mm. So that what we that what we believe in the military. 
I see. That's all what I want to share. And this is wow. maybe more than that, but uh, in summary of what I learned through my uh, four, three years at the academy. Well, thank, thank, thank you, Moon, for, for very, very eye-opening uh, idea on uh, this kind of, of, of issue. I, I know that many people have learned about uh, leadership, but sometimes uh, I'm not saying that it has been perceived uh, wrongly, but uh, when we talk about leadership, uh, from my point of view, uh, I observe that people uh, tend to get it wrong. Like uh, your leader, their subject, their leader. So a master, they're not saying that <laughs> the leader, the master. So that such a, per a perception have to be uh, uh, revisited. Uh, maybe uh, we can actually talk more about it afterward. But I know that uh, as long as we understand the facts that uh, it's not different between uh, uh, those who lead and those who uh, uh, have been taken care by the leader. So we know that the well-being of the people, those uh, whom we lead is, is actually the, the, the problem in this. And I actually, I have a, one more question to ask for, for, for this kind of issue, but I, I, you have been explaining me and tell me, uh, tell me, uh, telling me all uh, everything about it. So I, I might I change my mind for example, like, uh, I, I want to ask if anyone would be having a, a, a Leadership skills, I mean, uh, anyone can acquire it or not, but as you said, it seems like everyone has to have it because sharing sympathy, you, you care for the other, you also have to be uh, showing your characteristic leader by example, and also uh, accountability as human being, because in the society, you need people like that uh, to, to, to take care of the other, you stand uh, to protect the other. You you take all accountability for your fault or whatever problem that uh, you face. And yes, uh, it's it's always everything about our daily life. So it doesn't mean that you own a company, organization, or being in military. But in every uh, aspects of life, we need leadership. So any any ones uh, based on the definition, based on your plan, should have at least sympathy and observation as well as communication, dialogues to, 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 to fix things or to address problems. But thank you for that, uh, Moon. So I'm moving to another question. I think it linked yes, to, uh, to that part, but uh, it's, it's always, uh, the, many people have questioned if, uh, well, we always wonder if we, we obtain uh, such skill or such skill could be a uh, master over time. Do you think that it's can it 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 is kind of thing uh, is made or you're born with leadership? You master skills. things, right? All right, leadership yeah. skill. Well, it might be both side, right? But okay. to my perspective, it more like you you get training and then you practice it, I see. and then you you become leaders. And anyone can be a leader again. Anyone from every corner of the earth can be a leader, whether to lead themselves. Yeah. to lead their family, to lead their peer, to influence the group of people, a group of people and stuff. It's not it's just a position that, hey, you are now a leader because you have authority. Well, we call authority and leadership, right? But leadership in general is the way that you influence people, whether your knowledge, whether your behavior, whether your background, if you can influence people to do great things, you are a leader. So if through your practice, it through your um, um, taking taking accountability of doing a wrong thing and then you fix it, mm. and I think I think it's very um, very natural thing that everyone could be a leader. I see. Okay. Thank thank you, Moon. Uh, let me uh, to, uh, move to a very specific questions uh, to a skill uh, a, a leader should have. You mentioned good leader should have it, but I have. Theme because uh, I read some books and then uh, we talk about uh, from uh, the president Harry Truman. Uh, I think uh, he also has a quote. Uh, he said, "Not all reader are leader, but all reader, sorry, but all leader are reader." So, do you think is there anything related to uh, reading? Uh, uh, because the quote might have its own ways of interpretation. So. Uh, we we mm -hmm. talk about uh, reading habit and so on, but he already mentions not all readers are leaders, but all readers, sorry, all leaders are readers. So it seems like all leaders have to read. 
Do you agree with the quote or you might think differently? Absolutely, absolutely. I, I agree with the quote because as a leader, reading, it might be learning, right? It's just not about reading the book or about reading um, uh, stuff, but it might be in general meaning to my perspective of learning. So if you're a leader, you're not learning, you're going to keep yourself uh, limited. And, and as a leader, you need to be more, more like broad, um, I mean, open your minds to the world. You accept the failure and then you learn from it and you may listen to your peer, you may listen to your subordinate and learn from them because they might have a different idea. They might yeah. have um, um, better knowledge about a specific things that yeah. we don't know. For example, in military, as an officer, I don't know everything. As an officer, I don't know everything. So I have people who are called enlisted and enlisted people who do the job and they're really, really good at that job. As a leader, I'm not that good like them. So I need the advice. What should yeah. we do? Can you give me advice? So every leader, when we graduate from the Naval Academy, from the Academy in general, will become a junior officer. So be a junior officer, there will be another person called chief or senior chief will be with, with junior officers to give advice. So chief or senior chief is really, really good at their job. They are not making decisions. They are not leader. They are not officer. And they respect the officer. They, when they say with us, when they call us, they call sir, man. But at the end of the day, we respect their knowledge. So they give us advice. They give us the idea how to fix things, how to do things properly, because we don't know it. We are not expertise. We are not an expert in that job. So again, I absolutely with, uh, agree with your uh, quote, because leader should learn, should keep yourself updated. Otherwise, you maybe keep yourself limited and which is not a good thing for leaders. I see. Thank, thank you, Moon. And uh, another question, because we know that uh, in, in, in leadership, uh, in leadership uh, uh, affair, uh, you need to have, and especially in military affair as well, uh, you see uh, many of officials have very high self-discipline. And I know that you understand yourself well in terms of uh, well, because you, you need to know yourself before you can actually uh, uh, know exactly what, 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 uh, what problem you face and then how you deal with the problem and so on. We will move uh, uh, to another section uh, on uh, problem solving or decision making in uh, leadership, uh, involving leadership skills. So, but uh, in this part, I want to focus more on, on self-discipline and understanding oneself or self-awareness. So uh, have you been able to, to uh, I mean, uh, two question, how self-discipline uh, could be developed and understanding oneself could be made? Because I, I, I know that many people still have a uh, struggle to uh, understand oneself and uh, keeping ourselves in a very high discipline is really challenging, especially if you are not in, uh, well, military because you need training, you need to, for example, like wake up early, uh, you need to, uh, well, a lot of stuff that, that yes. you're doing, but that self-discipline that saved you to be who you are. But in a normal life, I don't think that people will have their own standard of discipline or trying to understand oneself clearly. Because as long as you understand yourself, you know what you want, and then you can make decisions better. But I, I believe that. But even my, even I myself sometimes mess up with this kind of thing like the self-discipline and so on. So how can you build that? How can you make it? possible for yourself i think i think military give a really good training on that you know what the first day when you show up when you give up life as a civilian to be a service member you're going to go through if you're enlisted you're going to go through what we call boot camp and if you are, are an officer you would go to what you call officer candidate school ocs or you come to the academy it might be basic training for the army and Air Force and for the uh, and Naval Academy to be a Navy and a Marine Corps, you may have what you call fleet summer. And those trainings are for us to transform our life from civilian to be in a to be a service member. And the way that they transform is to build your discipline. And we take advantage of that when we take um, we are very fortunate on that because even though we don't want to do it, somebody gonna tell us to do it. And if we don't do it, we're going to be in trouble. So whether you like to do it or not, you must do it. 
And because we keep doing it constantly, it builds up our habit. And then one day, like 30, 30 days a month, based on research, it shows that people will build habit. And once it beca- become a habit, mm-hmm. it's your natural right now. You just do it right away, right? <laughs> so we take advantage of that. Um, but in civilian world, when you want to wake up, in the morning and say, ah, uh, no, I'm not going to wake up. <laughs> and you, we're going to continue to sleep. But here's the thing that I like to let you um, uh, think this way, motivate all of you um, to think this way. If you don't do the job now, you might have to wake up early in the morning tomorrow to do it. Not because of you want to do it, but because of you have to do it. So why don't you do it now? Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you, Moon, for, for that. So building a, a habit that could allow you to, to do it naturally is the only thing that uh, you could uh, do in, uh, in, in uh, a normal life. That, that requires a lot of, uh, well, it's, it's about commitment. It's about the determination. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. determination of I don't blame. I don't blame the civilian world <laughs> yeah. because nobody going to force you to do it in by, by your own. But we military different. If we don't, we don't want to do it, no, we have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I move to another uh, issue that we all have faced. It's not just, well, it is a part of military, uh, it's, it's a part of, sorry, leadership issue as well, uh, because uh, no leader can move forward without embracing change and welcome criticism. I think it is always difficult for all of us to, uh, it is hard to swallow when people talk candidly or give us a very frank uh, feedback on whatever we do, because we know that every one of us make mistakes and at the same time, we do badly sometimes and we decide some, uh, it's not com- uh, based on comprehensive assessments on the issue and it creates a problem sometimes. But as long as you don't embrace change and accept your, your own failure or whatever you did wrong, it's the only thing. But many still find it hard to, to accept criticism and ask for feedback if possible. Because in military, like you said, uh, it's accountability. It's about how you, you, you own uh, the problem, uh, the ownership of the problem and so on. So you already learn to welcome feedback and ask for, ask for, for, for feedback or, sorry, welcome criticism is possible. So how can you, you, you become so uh, uh, used to that kind of situation and how other people can do the same? For example, like if you want to be welcoming feedback and then change yourself, it's the only way. But the problem is that your ego, your, I mean, that people <laughs> tend to feel like, well, I don't welcome any criticism. What I do is right. And people has no, has nothing to say about me. So how can we change that kind of perception and mindset? It, it takes a lot, a lot of, of, of effort to get that thing done. Thank you. You know what we said is like, it not just happened in civilian world, I mean, in general, but it happened all as well in military world, we are service member, we have the same problem. But because we understand that people is hard to accept the complaint, the criticism and, and stuff. So we build as a, a system where you can criticize your peer. We call them ER, which means that every, every like one semester, every um, six months, we got to do all the evaluation to each other. And, and that will be taken into an official record. And we want our people to say the truth so that we could promote, we could be, I mean, a better position to promote our ranking, right? So if people say bad thing about us, but hey, you are not accepting the complaint. You are not accepting the criticism. You are not a good officer. Mm-hmm. So you are likely not, going to be promoted so the people try to open my and and this is learning this is not easy to accept not only you not only i me myself and and many other people have the same problem but we're going to learn how to accept it otherwise in military you're not going to be promoted because you have a bad record and Mm. again um we also train that um we accept the value that there's always people better than us there's always people the same as there's mm-hmm. always people who are below us so that we're going to learn from people who are above us. We're going to be together in the same pace, keep pace with people that are equal us, and we're going to have people below us so that we all grow together. I see. Thank, thank you, Moon. 
uh, another question that we all talk about, uh, I think previously we, we talked about problem solving skill, uh, how you, you deal with the, the challenge uh, or problem that you face. So uh, share with us one important, uh, one important uh, lesson that you learn during your training when it comes to dealing with new problem or uh, solving the, the problem uh, that you encounter I'm not really sure what kind of problem in life, but the big one would be great uh, when you're trying to deal with, but lesson you learn through military uh, training would give you an opportunity to deal it effectively. Thank you. Um, your question reminds me about back three years ago, three, four years ago, when I um, got through what it called sleep summer. And every morning, all of us, about thousands of people coming together, future junior officer, come together in a, a hall called King Hall, a dining hall. It's really, really big. They give us about 15 minutes to, to have our meal each time. And every moment, every time when we go to have meal, with a breakfast, with a lunch, with a um, dinner, there is always a great people, I mean, a, a good people, a good leaders coming and talk to us. And every time the, the brigade commander will always come and share us one word. Every challenge is an opportunity. And thousand people of us repeat, I mean, say together, race to it. And that kind of view that still, still happened in my mind that is really, really motivated. So whether you've gone through a really tough time, a tough day, your detailer yells at you, um, your peer doesn't understand you well, whatever problem that you have, when you go through that situation, when everybody say that race to it, and every challenge is an opportunity, is really super motivated. And I really, really enjoy the um, the ways that we we do that together to motivate each other. So, and again, just like to highlight a little bit, maybe not related to your um, question, but when I'm talking about this, I also notice about one thing that I forget to share when I'm talking about leaders as a seven. Yep. Every day when we go to breakfast, meal, or dinner, leader in military would eat last. They are the person who eat last. They are not going to eat first. I see. So my squad leader, three back to three, four years ago, he made sure that everyone is accountable. Tens of us come and sit. We don't miss anyone. And then we all pass permission, sir, permission to have a seat. It's a sit. And then we all sit. Mm -hmm. But when we share the food, when we share the food, he's not going to accept it until every one of us have food on our table. So, so that kind of leader have been trained in the military that they're going to eat last because they are leader. They need to take care of people first. I see. And, and I see in a lot of civilian world, not, not all the people, again, there's a lot of great leaders in the civilian world. I'm yeah. not going to um, uh, criticize them, but my experience, I see, yes, there are also a lot of people who really very selfish too. <laughs> but in, in, in military, we train people to be selflessness. And, and that's why we always say in the United States Marine Corps, in the United States Navy, we say leader eat last. And if you read the books, uh, Simon Sinek, he wrote also a book, Leader Eat Last, because he experienced with the United States Marine Corps and he worked with the Marine Corps for many years in Iraq, in the United States. And that's why he see, the, uh, see those kind of culture that grow in the military. And I think it's kind of nice culture, right? You are the leader, you are not important. Just like you mentioned, you are not the leader, you are not a subject, but your people is important because they do the job for you. You need to care, taking care of them so that they could accomplish the, the work. I see. Thank you, Moon. Thank you so much for, for, for this uh, interesting uh, experience you share with us about uh, what your uh, leadership lesson you learned throughout your military training. And uh, it's really helpful for, for people out there. So uh, my next question, we can discuss more on uh, uh, leaderships and young people here in Cambodia as a developing country. Uh, we have uh, more uh, young people uh, and uh, they are uh, uh, the future. They are the engine of growth. They are uh, very important to uh, our country development. And I know that uh, we have young and promising uh, population, and uh, they also obtain skills that could be a uh, very great help for uh, many other sectors, uh, economy, 
uh, agriculture, uh, social developments, um, and even politics and so on. So uh, when it comes to leadership, uh, to you uh, as a, I think uh, you are a senior because at our age, uh, we, we are turning to the point that we can share something to younger people than us. So uh, what do you think our young Cambodians should learn more when it comes to leadership skill based on your observations and, and, and your, 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 I think, immersive experience in the American society or in, um, in the military world, I can say? Well, from my humble experience and views, I think before you be a leader, before you become a leader, you should learn how to be a good follower first. Um, like what I said, the first day when I show up, I'm not a leader. I'm just a plea. The lowest rank in the military, I do the job that no one else wants to do. I see. And three years, four years later, I become a company commander. And, and now I become an advisor, by the way. Um, so you need to learn how to be a good follower first before you be a, a, become a, a leader. Like what I said, my crew in San, San Diego, California, and underway, I learned how hard it is to be enlisted men and women. And I need to understand your problem so that when I become an officer, I know how to do a better job. I know how hard they are so that I will make a good decision that not really affect their life so much. And again, take every opportunity that you have to lead. So start from a small thing. You don't need to, to lead a big thing at the, at the beginning. So after a plea, I become a, a youngster. So as a youngster, I take the opportunity to lead one or two plea only. I need to do it as much as good I can. When it's a good time to practice, right? Leadership, again, is not born with. Maybe some people are special, I don't know, but I'm not one of them. Mm -hmm. I. I need training to be a leader. And I'm well, see, now I'm not a, a leader yet. But anyway, um, take the opportunity and practice it. One day you're going to make it. And after being a plebe, I become a second class. When I become a second class, normally they would, they would um, promote first D or what they call first class to be a squad leader. But because I do a better job on taking care of my people, my two plebe, they promote me to be a squad leader. So a squad leader doing the job that, that um, taking care of the 10 people in your squad, you make sure they're good, you make sure that they are okay and take accountability and know all the problems they share with you and strive to solve not only the, the problem that at the academy or at the flea, but including their personal life. We are human, we are people, we face a lot of private life problems. And that affects our, our lives too, so that you need to know that, understand that, and try to have your people. And after that, I move on, jump from, um, not, not become a platoon commander, but then my battalion officer promoted me to be a company commander. So, so that's how it works. So the lesson that I learned from my humble experience, I like to share with you that learn to be a good follower first before you become a leader, and then take every opportunity you have to lead to become a leader. I see. That's what my, my, my uh, perspective. I see. Uh, thank, thank you, Moon, for, for, this, uh, for this great sharing. And I know that uh, our young people need uh, mentoring, need advice, need recommendation, and so on. Uh, like you mentioned earlier, be uh, a, a good follower first before you move to another step. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I, I think that uh, it is important uh, to understand the fact that leadership, like we mentioned earlier, is not just about uh, subject and, and followers, it's not about uh, leaders of company or organization. It can be in every aspect of life. So can you, to your understanding or to, 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 to your own perspective, uh, uh, how important uh, 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 leadership skill is in, uh, uh, I would say, in, in every uh, life of the people, especially in solving social problems we face. Uh, currently, for example, like in our country, as a developing or the least developed country, uh, there are always a lot of, 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 of social problems. Uh, there's uh, some uh, challenges that face uh, the facings of the society. 
and people have to uh, the, at least join together to 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 contribute at least to 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 make sure that we can uh, resolve the problem together. So, what is the role of leadership in 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 making this possible, uh, especially in addressing social uh, uh, challenges or uh, social development challenges? I would say. Well, again, we all agree that um, leadership is everyone can be a leader again. And, and by saying that, it doesn't mean you need an authority uh, position. You can start it right away with your own thing, with your own view. And we need a single voice first, right? We need a single voice first to do stuff. And then other people who believe in what you believe, and then they start, we will start to combine as a group. And then we do our, we, 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 we um, execute our, our plan and, and to achieve our mission, right? So every aspect of society, I believe we need a single view. We need a single voice, come first. And then more people who, who tend to think the same way will come, they're more motivated by you to come. So the only thing that is that, are you, are you confident enough to raise that voice? Are you, are you, are you um, I mean, confident enough to kind of face challenges? If you are confident enough, start it, do it right away. It's not just only um, global issue. Yeah. It could be starting from your family issue. Yeah. It could be starting from your village issue or your small community first. And then it might be bigger and bigger and bigger because we are not doing a big things and right away. Everything start from one small step first, right? So yeah. that's how I, I view the, the importance of, um, of being a leader as starting, starting, in initiating, yeah. Yeah, initiating thing. Okay, that's great. That's so you start with some sort of initiations, uh, any initiative that you will have uh, would be great in your own community, in your own family, in, in, in your own team or group. So uh, I think that would be important uh, to be uh, starting with. Okay, yes, sir. <laughs> I think uh, we will have two more questions uh, before we wrap up this discussion. I think it has been very uh, enjoyable and I know that we have learned a lot from, from you as, uh, as you share not just uh, your own uh, experiences, but also your thoughts on uh, these particular subjects that many people are interested in. So uh, my, my next question, uh, I, I, would just to, I would just want to ask you uh, because uh, we cannot stop learning uh, at any point. Uh, leaders, well, then I know that you need a leader need to learn much more to keep up with whatever they face. You know, for example, like problem solving, because you need to know more than the other. You need to understand the facts that where thing is going and so on. So uh, keep up with learning. You keep learning new things. Be open to uh, learning new things is important. So to you personally, I, I want to learn from your own uh, personal experience. How can you keep up with that uh, learning new skills? How you uh, motivate yourself to stay uh, 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 determined to uh, learning new things? Uh, so other people might be able to learn from you because some people uh, feel like, okay, uh, they want to learn, but end ending up with uh, learning that thing because sometimes, for me personally, sometimes I become lazy, like commitment and so on. So to you, uh, from, I want to learn from your experience as well. Oh, thank you. Um, my, my experience, here the thing is, as let's, let's start with guitar. I don't know how to play guitar before, um, really bad. Uh, when I see people sing a song, I like to do that. But you know what? It's hard to go and find a school to do it. And especially because I myself really, really have a touch time. I have very um, busy schedule. So what I do is that, taking time, like 15 minutes a day, learning from YouTube. There's a lot of great videos taught you how to do uh, guitar, how to uh, play guitar. So 15, a day, 15, 15 um, minutes a day will build up your capacity, will build up your, your skill. And again, at the academy, there's so many, so, so many things to do. I wake up 5 a.m. in the morning, and then my job will finish at 12 a.m. at midnight or sometime up until 1 a.m. midnight. It's so much thing to do. And again, but we still manage um, to do some other stuff like learning how to box. We do boxing, 
we do ground fighting, we do um, karate, uh, we do swimming. So I take time. You know what? It here the thing is, if you read the book um, Leader It Last, the, the author called Simon uh, Cygnus, he have a great view on this. Let's say when you go to um, when you go to work out, you put like 10 hours a day to work out and then you come back, nothing's going to change. Nothing's <laughs> going to change, I promise. But yeah. what? If you do it 20 minutes every day, three years later, sorry, three months later, when you, when you, when you look at in a, on a mirror, you might feel different, right? For sure. Same thing. Everything, you don't need really like, oh, I'll put it right now and do it. No, it doesn't work that way. Slowly build it. Slowly build it and you will reach your goal. That's my, that's my uh, points of view. Thank you, uh, Moon. And I think that my final question. Uh, we have been discussing uh, since the beginnings about uh, well, the definitions, uh, the, the characteristics of good leader, and also how uh, leadership evolves or whether it, it can be made or it need to be born naturally and so on. So we discuss wide ranks of issues related to leadership, especially in military affairs. But the last point should be uh, uh, we uh, should be the uh, uh, the, uh, the issue that related to uh, every one of us, uh, especially young Cambodians who are watching our uh, discussion right now. We they want to know more about you, especially how uh, uh, you have been able to to uh, do something that you've been doing right now. And I I, I think it, it it was uh giving you time to give us at least a, a very short message to our uh, audience out there, uh, any important message you want our youth to understand, especially related to your, your, your work, your ability to build your, up your skill. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, the very beginning of this uh, discussion is about how you switch from one uh, uh, skill to another. I know that uh, it's not many people could, could do the same. For example, you're, you're working and studying a medical study. And after that, you, you also have a, a very broad knowledge on international affairs. And after that, you are moving in military. So it seemed like, well, some people might say there's two different worlds, like from medical study, it's, just, it's a science. And after that, you have a great idea on uh, your great knowledge on social science, uh, foreign affairs, because it seemed to be, well, people tend to be this, uh, having, uh, they, they, they actually try to create a blockade between two things. If they're involving the, uh, for example, like if you're studying um, uh, medical, medical or something related to science, not many people will be interested in uh, international affairs, what's going on out there, and so on. So it seemed like uh, you create a uh, different uh, mindset on this issue. So uh, just a, a message from you uh, to our youth uh, related to uh, uh, your own uh, experience as far as your current uh, role in military sector uh, from maybe uh, anything you think fit in this uh, form. Ladies and gentlemen, well, I'm just, um, I I'm not special again. I born as the um, son of a poor farmer. I raised by a single great mother uh, who earned less than one US dollars a day, really tough life. My grandmother, thank you to her that um, she gave me the opportunity to go uh, to study. And again, I reach to this day because of dream, because of commitment, because of hard working that I have. But again, I'm not gonna forget about support from my friend, from my family, from people around me that motivate me to be, to be here. And, and success doesn't falling from the sky. You need to go and, and, and make it happen by yourself. And it's always possible. It's always possible. If you have a dream and you have a strong commitment and you work hard, sell this clean. And again, you don't really need to do it in a day. It takes years. Like myself, I dreamed to come to the Naval Academy for 10 years, ladies and gentlemen. It took me 10 years becoming from a, about a boy who tend a cow under uh, reading a book and heard about Naval Academy. I don't even know what it is. I don't even know what it is, but I think because that place created a great leader at a time when I read the book and then I start my dream. 
And you know what? 10 years to some people, they may give up, but no, I don't. And because of that strong commitment, I have, and everybody have it. Everybody, of, every one of you have it, have that capacity to keep it up to, uh, to the commitment, to the hard work, to, the, to your dream. So believe in yourself. You can do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Moon. I think uh, that's a, a, a very inspiring message to our youth out there. But I wanted to, to, to have a short summary of this. Uh, first of all, success does not fall from the sky. <laughs> and after that, nothing is impossible. Don't give up if you have a dream. And after that, uh, I think one last point, I'm, I'm not mistaken, uh, you talk about, uh, but maybe I, 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 I got confused. So don't give up. So don't give up anything, any dream you have, please don't give up. Just follow uh, what our speaker has mentioned earlier it's about it, his, his past, his life past that could uh, make him who he is today. So uh, it started from commitment uh, and also uh, trying so hard to get where you want to go. Thank you, Moon, for, for your very, uh, 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 I think I'm not really sure what, what, what to uh, describe this, but very uh, exceptional uh, the discussion I have today on uh, a topic, military leadership. And uh, it is uh, very, uh, very uh, important to our, uh, our, our audience out there. And I know that uh, they have at least quite new knowledge on that. And it linked to military, sorry, it linked to leadership skill in general that they could uh, apply in their daily life. Some people who are struggling to learn about understanding themselves, uh, maybe they could actually know as well how uh, difficult life a military is. So uh, <laughs> thank you. And I hope that to, to welcome you again in our next session. So I think uh, there's other topic that uh, you will be able to share with our people out there. So. I, I think uh, we'll be, of course, inviting you again to, uh, to take part in our session. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you so uh, much, Ms. Anisai, <laughs> and thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Okay, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is the end of our program, uh, the reflection. Uh, I think uh, the discussion uh, is, is in English, like we mentioned uh, earlier. Uh, we allow uh, young people not only young people, but anyone who has a story to share, significant or not significant doesn't matter, as long as um, uh, it is important to uh, our people to learn, as well as to, to share their, their story, like Moon, for example, and uh, some sort of expertise that really matter to our society. Uh, we invite uh, all of them to share their, 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 their uh, part in this event. Okay, thank you so much, uh, everyone. Uh, uh, have a good day. Thank you.